Hey everyone, First of T here. Thanks for checking out this YouTube channel. Congratulations, Hudson Swafford, on your second PGA career win with the 2020 Corrales Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship. Here's his post win virtual press conference interview. Just have a couple of technical issues here. Hudson, um, um, congratulations, congratulations on the second PJ Tour victory. Um, you, you moved to number two in the next couple of this win. Um, you, you made a very interesting down the stretch. Um, let's, let's just hear some of initial thoughts about uh, the, day the day and how it panned out. Uh, yeah. I, it was kind of on cruise control. Felt great all day, honestly. Hit a lot of good quality shots, hit a lot of good putts. Um, didn't, I mean, just was kind of in my own little world. Felt comfortable, felt great. And uh, obviously missing a left on 12, that's, uh, that's a no-no. I was trying to hit it kind of maybe the front bunker or run it up the slope. I missed it just left. And uh, probably had the best lie all week uh, around the greens. And uh, I just decided to go under it. <laughs> and... Came right back to my feet, and probably the best shot of the tournament for me was the next chip that uh, went up there to about two feet right under it. And uh, honestly, I, I hit one bad golf shot all day, and it wasn't even the next hole. I hit a great drive, hit a great great little three-quarter flighted pitching wedge, and you just kind of run out of room on that line. I thought the wind would hit a little bit, and it didn't. First chip, I didn't really even hit that bad. I just kind of stuck into the... Uh, into the past pal and came back and then had to gather my thoughts and really didn't hit a bad chip in the next one. I thought it was going to be pretty close and hit stopped and hit a good putt. And it was what it was. I was still in my own world. Didn't really feel terrible, but I only hit, I hit one bad shot and that was on 15. I hit a bad nine iron, just kind of quit on it. Didn't have a great number. Was just trying to hit a high nine iron, honestly, into the wind. It was a little too much club, but I knew if I just got it up in the wind, it would, it would be perfect. And I just kind of quit on it, but but after that, I really just kind of gathered myself and made a lot of good aggressive swings at conservative targets and uh, put myself in a great spot on 16. Thought I made the putt, ran over the lip. 17, pulled on some memories from uh, my last win at PGA West. And number 17, when I hit an eight iron, I might have shoved it a little bit, but it went to about two inches and made birdie. I just, I knew I could do it. Uh, my caddy said, you know, just three-quarter six-iron, bud. You, this is one of your favorite shots. You've been hitting your six-iron good. Just let's see it. It's a 190 shot and uh, hit a beauty. And um, hit two good ones on 18. Thought thought that I could just smash a wedge and just fly just on top. And obviously it didn't. And hit a putt. It started bouncing. It actually, my first putt was actually pretty good. Just started bouncing a little bit. And then we, uh, my caddy and Kyle and I, we were kind of talking to I thought the putt might go a little right. He said it might go a little left on the last hole, and he just said, "Man, just hit a, hit a solid putt. You've uh, hit a lot of them. Just hit one more solid putt, and and uh, I, I hit a hit a great one. I don't even know which side of the hole it went on went in on. I just know that it was going in. And I just looked at him, and there it was." It's tough. I'm not gonna lie. Um, being hurt out here is not fun. Um, especially, I got hurt the year after I did win. Uh, hurt my ribs. Had to sit out ten weeks. And out here, you can't take a medical if you're exempt that year and for the following year. So ended up. I think I finished like 152. I, I mean, so the next year, my status was I wasn't in the players. I weren't. I wasn't in any invitationals. And when I got hurt, I think I believe I was. 73rd in the world um so yeah it was tough and some doubt disbelief i mean it just i mean it knocks you down and and then i started really when i first came back after my rib injury i finished third at sony and started getting going and the game was feeling good and then my foot just really started bothering me i would come off off weeks 
and it was fine. But then to about Friday, after two rounds, it was <laughs> it was miserable walking, and that's what I do for a living is walk. And ended up found out I have a broken sesamoid bone in the ball of my foot that uh, had to be removed, and when they took it out, the bone was dead. So it, it you know, I felt like I'd just gotten back, just gotten confidence back, and and then that setback was there. But um, yeah, it's it's been a struggle, and I was out for four months with that. So it, it was it was a struggle. But the best thing that happened to my wife Catherine and I was our little guy was born. So and people that know me, I love kids. So it's been truly the best thing and amazing. I mean, being, I've been home a lot, so that's been fun to be be kind of a family guy. Although the competitive nature in me wants to be out competing and and seeing my buddies play well you know i want to i want to be doing that and over COVID, i really saw some good things I, I played really nicely and solid at the waste management this year i played great at honda and over COVID, continued to kind of have that good form and came back felt like every aspect of my game had gotten better everyone every bit of it and it just really wasn't showing i was getting my own way and then some more doubt just kind of crept in and I just kept thinking about the medical and it's like man this is this is tough because I only had seven events but did I mean my teacher Scott Hamilton he couldn't tell me much because I'd go on the range hit it great go on the golf course with him hit it great go to the tournament get my own way so I got back to doing a little bit of work with uh my buddy Brett McCabe and he's kind of got me back on the straight and narrow and thinking kind of like a kid and and having fun again, he's like, man, if you if you keep thinking about a medical, you're not going to keep your card anyway, so you might as well just go have fun. And you know your game's good. You know all your stuff's good. It's going to show up. Just commit to the process and, you know, have fun and just see where see what happens. All right. We've got three reporters lined up here. Um, we'll start with Doug Ferguson from the Associated Press. Go ahead, Doug. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Hi, Doug. First of all, when, um, when was Little Guy born, and did you give him a name, or is it just Little Guy? <laughs> well, actually, it's Tornado, but uh, no, he's actually a junior. He's James Hudson Swafford, Jr., and he was born uh, in December 2018. You, uh, you mentioned a couple times uh, staying in your own little world. Did you ever come out of your own little world down the stretch? Did you ever start feeling it, and, and um, how did you pull off that shot on, on 17? I'll tell you what, I, I no, I really didn't. I I was kind of indecisive on one golf shot today, and that was the 9-iron at 15. I, I'd, I'd hit pulls there three days in a row leading into this one, and I was just trying to hit a flight of 9-iron, something that I've done all day beautifully. And I, I was talking to Kyle, and I was like, we can just, I can just kind of hit a high 9-iron. It won't go over the green. The wind will hit it. It'll get up top. It'll be perfect. And I just quit on it. Um, I wasn't even, I was mad with the result, but I wasn't mad with the pitching wedge that I hit on 13 going over the green. I knew I needed to play a little bit more aggressive and the wind just didn't hit it. I actually hit a really good golf shot right at the target I was looking at. So I wasn't mad there, it was just a bad result. Um, but no, I still had great self-belief. I, I just I just kept going, just knowing that if I just focused on my rhythm that my game was gonna be good and I hit two great shots on 16. You got to miss to that pin. You got to miss on the front. We've been talking about it all week, Kyle and I. So I had a great look there. Hit a great putt. Ran over the lip. Thought I made it. And uh, I was just envisioning my shot on 17 at PJ West when uh, I stepped up on the uh, 17th green. Obviously, it was that was an eight iron versus a six iron here. But um, you know, he, he Kyle said, you know, this is just a three quarter six iron. You've been hitting your six iron great all day, all week just hit one more it's a 190 shot just do it and I uh, hit a beauty and then um, solid putt and went right in and thanks. yeah all right thank you well done thanks hey thank you Doug uh, now we'll go to Adam Stanley from pjtour.com go ahead Adam yeah hey uh, Hudson congratulations man uh, nice uh, nice win there today um, just wondering if you could expand a little bit on being a father, you know, first time, obviously, maybe if that's impacted how you played or how you practice or how you kind of go about your day to day business. Yeah, I definitely I probably try to practice a little bit more efficiently and a little less. My wife might tell you different, but uh, 
no, it, it's being a father is the best thing in the world to me. Um, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. And you know, my wife and I, we we are blessed. I mean, we got the greatest little boy, James. Uh, he's full of life. I like to call him the tornado because he just, I mean, just like most little kids, he's all over the place and tearing up everything. And he's got the funniest little personality. So I can't wait to see him next week at Sanderson Farms. And I guess, uh, obviously, it's such a weird year, but uh, I would assume that you're super excited to jump on FaceTime with them or something like that as well to kind of celebrate as a family. Yes, uh, very fortunate for FaceTime. Yeah, we, my wife and I have been FaceTiming in morning and afternoon while we've been down here. Um, we've got some great help at home, helping him, <laughs> looking after him, which uh, we're very fortunate of. And then we can come down here to the Dominican and actually kind of take a vacation and with a little golf involved. So uh, it, it's been excellent. And yeah, I, we can't wait to see him next week. Awesome. Thanks, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Adam. Next question, we'll go to Brian Wacker, uh, Golf Digest. Go ahead, Brian. Hey, Anton. Congratulations. Uh, Thanks, Brian. Nice, nice win. Um, Touch on this a little earlier, but what's going through your head walking from 15 to 16 at that moment? I'm sure you're kind of aware. Uh, uh, I didn't. I didn't see a leaderboard really. I knew that, obviously, making a double on 13 and you know terrible bogey on 15. I was, I wasn't out of my thinking, but it just a. I'm not gonna say my wheels were spinning either. I was actually feeling pretty confident and pretty comfortable. It's just maybe a little bit more doubt than I had the rest of the day because honestly, I felt comfortable and ready to go all day. Hit, hit great shots all day. Uh, it was hitting the ball solid. So I knew on 16, I knew the pin was in the front. I turns into a birdie hole. Um, 17, pin was in the front. So, you know, a good solid shot there could lead to a birdie. And 18 is kind of, you know, dependent on the drive and obviously the pin just over the ridge, it makes it a little tougher. So I, I knew I had to just kind of dig deep and hit some solid golf shots with the wind. And um, I'd hit a lot of them through 69 holes or whatnot. So I, I knew I could continue to do it. And then just to follow the putt on 18, of course, a difficult one, you, you put it well, you know, really all week, um, but it's kind of a nervy, with six, six, seven feet at that point. Um, yeah, it, uh, yeah, I'd been hitting solid putts all week. Um, actually, my first putt I hit really good. It just started hopping up the hill and uh, killed the speed. I thought I had, thought I hit a great first putt and uh, came up about six feet short. And I was like, okay. But um, man, my caddy read it great on the last hole. I thought it might be going to right. It was a little bumpy. I mean, a little little traffic there throughout the day so he's like man just hit a, hit another solid putt just one more solid putt you never know and i don't even know which side really the hole that it went in but i hit a good one it was tracking right down my line i just looked at kyle and I maybe mean, it was ecstatic and so I, I i knew it went in and uh the rest is kind of history great thanks all right thanks brian uh, we'll just go back to doug Ferguson for one or two more thanks doug go ahead Ready? I think I was asleep at the wheel for a minute. Sorry, but did, did you say? Give me the, the medical rundown again. How many? You had seven tournaments. Yeah, seven tournaments. And How so was foot surgery last summer. So I had foot surgery a year ago this past July. Right. Started my medical. I actually, my first tournament back was the French Open. Just to kind of knocked some rust off, and actually went. Kyle and I went over there and played really solid for my first tournament in a while. And then my first tournament back on tour was Mexico and. And I didn't play great, but I played four rounds. And uh, then the RSM, and then actually played pretty, really nicely at Waste Management and Honda. And I think I was like 19 points shy when uh, the coronavirus came and uh, shut us down. So, and then I had the re option of restarting and I only had one event left going, going back to the restart. And so it, it wasn't a too tough of a decision, honestly. Uh, you know, getting seven starts, you know, seven chances to win versus one is, uh, there's a lot of outliers in just one event. And, uh, but I only had to get 19 points. So we, me and my team made a decision. We were gonna restart and, and uh, I'd been playing great golf leading into that. And, 
you know, and wasn't seeing results. And so it was getting a little frustrating. It was wearing on me, but um, I knew all my stuff was good. Working with Scotty Ham, he's he couldn't really tell me much to do. It's like, man, I, I got nothing for you. I bet you're playing great. You're swinging at it great. And uh, it was just kind of mental and did some work with uh, Brett McCabe and kind of got me back on the straight and narrow and thinking like a kid. Uh, here we are. Did you, um, were you always going to play here? I was, yeah. Okay. I, uh, I came here two years ago and actually I missed a cut, but I liked the golf course. I mean, it really, it really sets up good for me. I was kind of not in a good place when I came here last year, struggling with my game. But um, you got to be a great mid to long iron player here with the par threes and a lot of long par fours. So I thought the golf course set up great for me. And um, so, yeah, I, I, I'd been playing good. And so I, I wasn't going to miss it. And now, and, and now that the Ryder Cup's been canceled and this is by itself, yeah. you're getting into the Masters. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's, it's good to go back to the Masters now. It's, um, I'm ecstatic. You know, if they, hopefully they extend that invitation. My... Uh, my caddy lives in North Augusta. Caddy to Augusta. He's, um, I mean, it easy week for him. And then uh, it's, yeah. So you know, I got a guy that's been around there numerous times. So I, I'm looking forward to going back. My first trip there, it was blowing 20 to 30, gust over 35. The par three was rained out, so it was, it was kind of a bummer. But uh, you know, to take take my son back for the par three. Um, and to get back, to get back to the get back to the the Masters is definitely going to be uh, going to be exciting. I'm sorry to ruin your day. Okay, honey. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Doug. Uh, that's the end of the questions. Just before we let you go, Hudson, uh, Doug just mentioned you get in the Masters, you also get the players, the PGA Championship, many invitationals, but also the Century Tournament of Champions, which is a pretty special event for me. So, just um, you've been there before as a champion. Uh, you have a youngster now. I mean, it's a, an island similarities yeah just, i mean it's a fun one on it's not gonna be a fun walk for my caddy but it's uh the best walk all year i mean 30 man field and in hawaii it's it's tough to beat it's a good place to uh start off uh, your year for sure um so i and i enjoy sony so you know it, having those back to back to get the year started and then obviously american express where i won um kind of get into a rhythm right there early in the year i uh I can't wait. I can't wait to get back to, uh, you know, the Tournament of Champions. Well, congratulations again on being a winner of the uh, Corrales Club Championship. We we'll look forward to having you back in March next year. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks, Hudson. Congratulations once again, Hudson Swafford. What are your thoughts on the 2020 Corrales Punta Cana Resort and Club Championship? Let me know in the comments section below, and please click on the thumbs up icon if you liked this video. Subscribing to this YouTube channel and sharing the video also helps. And don't forget to click on the notification button for this channel so you won't miss the next First 2T video.